In this video, we're going to be talking about these, the Nike Pegasus 39 Shield. What is up everybody and welcome to Waterproof HQ here at 40 Runs. This is our weatherized HQ where we talk about shoes that are meant to keep you nice and dry in the winter. Okay, people, so these sort of shoes uh, tend to split opinion. Some people say you don't need them. Some people say you do need them. Others, uh, like myself, get a pair because I'm out there coaching and things like that uh, in the you know English winter, and I need something that's a little bit warmer and it's got some form of, what's the best way, water repellentness. Now, if you're new to the channel, um, and welcome, if you are new to the channel, by the way, make sure you subscribe. If you're new to the channel, I buy a pair of these every year for coaching through the winter. Uh, the new Pegasus 39 is out. Now, little backstory on the Pegasus 39. I was a, uh, what's the best way to describe it? What's the best? I, was, uh, I was very harsh on the Pegasus the last few years uh, because they ruined it and they made it too narrow and it's just terrible. But the Pegasus 39, um, I think, what's well, well, hearing? Uh, the Pegasus 39 was a big improvement versus those other versions. So, when Pegasus 39 Shield came out, I had no problem buying it. Okay, that's what I think I wanted to say, get that right. So, um, let's talk about firstly the stats and features of the shoe, uh, and the differences between the, the non-Shield uh, version, version, and then we'll come on to what it's been like and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we've got uh, the weatherized version, shield, non-weatherized version. Uh, in terms of weight, out of interest, this is 10 ounces, which lost a fair amount of weight versus the previous version. This is 10.8, so not much difference, a little bit heavier, but 10.8 versus 10 ounces in the normal version. Um, in terms of uh, the stats, I've got uh, apparently an 8mm drop here, not sure. We've still got the two zoom units in the shoe, we've still got React foam uh we've got this awesome storm tread weather traction grip on it which is an absolute beast and that's one of the reasons why i buy this shoe we've then got a water repellent upper um it's not waterproof uh, but it is water repellent it's got elements over the toe uh, around the side so where those sort of areas where the water can come in they try to effectively tape it up to give you some protection there uh, we've got a very thick upper and um, uh, upper mid sole uh, mid foot section oh, awesome if i could speak mid foot section right so normal shield see that it's got like this really thick padding on it and it's got like this they call it on on the website like fleece lining but it, it's just a it's definitely a warmer um yeah warmer feeling inside of the shoe um yeah, that's probably the best way to describe it. Even with the tongue, it just feels like it's got a warmer material on it to try and keep your foot warm. Now, for me, I think they've gone a little bit too far, and we'll come on to that in just a minute. We've got a gusseted tongue, so plenty of um, help for locking down the shoe. We've got this, uh, see that, in terms of the lockdown versus like the fly wire on the uh, non-shield version. See that where they've got those tabs on there? Uh, so that pulls in, again, to try and trap some of that in um what else do you need to know about the shoe we've got some reflective elements on it it's 120 pounds and i think that's it in terms of stats and features i don't think i've done a very good job on that but it is what it is okay also big uh, uh problem for me on this shoe is the build quality this has got um a terrible amount of glue thrown all over it i think it's awful it's also arrived with this stuck on the back which is just awful but it just seems again with nike that they've just so badly put this together I, I just don't get it with nike um but yeah anyway that's a separate bugbear uh, that i've got with nike at the moment it's just it's just glue and stuff chucked all over it. it's really really poorly put together okay but this is not a video about me digging out nike because uh, as always this shoe performs as it should daily trainer with an incredible outsole for those winter conditions so we've had some <laughs> rain over here it's not been like mental mental but it's it's we've it's all of a sudden in this country got you know colder miserable damp and, and just yeah those mornings are a little bit slippery uh the grass and things like that are wet and you know the trail uh, the trails the towpaths that i'm running on they've got elements of you know uh puddles and all that kind of stuff now on them uh which will stay for the whole winter which is why for me this shoe comes starts coming into its own so uh where i've used them i so i'll give you an example on a 10 mile run we did um the the shoe 
was going through various different terrains. Uh, we did road, we did uh, uh, canal and towpath, we did a little bit of trail, um, and it took it all in its stride, which it would do. Uh, pace felt okay, pace felt comfortable, did a little bit of gold, did a little bit of easy, and it was absolutely fine. And that's the thing with the shoot, it is fine. It's nothing incredible, it's nothing amazing, it's not gonna blow you away, but, as a, a, a winter performer for a shoe that, you know, on those days where it's absolutely chucking it down and it's miserable, but you still need to get out there and get a run done because you're marathon training or whatever, you can kind of rely on it. The ride is very similar to this. As I said, it's just much of a muchness. Um, one issue is going to be the warmth of the shoe. It is very warm, and that's what I was alluding to earlier. It, it, even at this, you know, temperature, what was it 13 degrees yesterday when we was out? Uh, doing that 10 mile at 13 degrees it's warm already people so that is going to be an issue so if you suffer from hot feet there's like look there's not much ventilation there so it is going to be a problem i appreciate why it's not ventilated because obviously it's trying to keep some of that water out but if you if you don't like hot feet you know or, or you find that you do get hot feet this is not going to be for you to try and avoid that uh, the shoe does fit true to size by the way so that's that, that's probably the biggest downside to it i would say is the heat factor of the shoe but putting that to one side and the build quality, the Pegasus 39 Shield is exactly what you'd expect from a Pegasus 39 Shield. And it's great the fact that the, the, the 39 was a better evolution of the, uh, of the Pegasus lineup. That's great news. And they've not ruined it here. I don't think it's the nicest looking shoe. Um, it's so cheap looking, it's so cheap feeling. It reminds me of a Windflow, um, which is not great. But again, I buy this shoe for literally one or two reasons firstly that outsole right and then the ability to wear this when i'm coaching during the winter when the weather conditions are not very nice and that's basically why i buy the shoe yes i would probably still buy the uh Saucony endorphin um run shield whatever it's called if they bring a new version of that out i will buy that because that's a, a shoe that which you can then you know put into your longer miles and stuff like that but I'll have the two going side by side, but this will sit there now and just do some of the, the leg work on those days when it's a bit mucky and a bit horrible outside. But that's it for me. That's the Pegasus 39 Shield. Uh, they haven't ruined it. It is, you know, in line with the 39, which is, you know, good news. Um, yeah, and that's probably about as much as we need to say on that.